So this is the first of two videos in which we're going to be looking at how we can measure the rate of a chemical reaction. In this video, we're going to be looking at the reaction between sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid. Now, when the two solutions react together, they produce an insoluble precipitate of sulfur. And as that's made, the solution will go from being clear and colourless to a kind of yellow, cloudy colour. We're going to time how long it takes for that cloudy yellow colour to get so thick that we can't observe a cross that I have drawn on a piece of paper with a pencil. Now that cross is going to go underneath the reaction vessel and we're going to simply mix together 50 centimetres cubed of sodium thiosulfate with 10 of hydrochloric acid. We're going to vary the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate and see what effect that has on the time it takes for the precipitate to form and for the cross to disappear from view. And we'll be changing that concentration by diluting our sodium thiosulfate with some distilled water. But to start with, I'm going to go for the most concentrated sodium thiosulfate, which is 40 grams per decimeter cubed, as it comes out of the container here. And so I'm going to measure out 50 centimeters cubed of this into my measuring cylinder. So as before, getting down to eye level, so I can see the level of the sodium thiosulfate, I fill up my measuring cylinder, Ooh, almost there, little bit more until I've got exactly 50 centimetres cubed measured out and I'm going to pour that into the beaker. I'm now going to measure out just 10 of the acid so I'm using a slightly smaller measuring cylinder and again getting down to eye level holding the measuring cylinder firmly so it doesn't fall over and measuring out exactly 10 centimetres cubed. You can use a dropping pipette to do that, but I don't. Now the reaction is going to start as soon as I mix the acid with my sodium sour sulfate. So I need to be ready with my timer to start as soon as I add it. Just a swirl or two to get them well mixed. And then I'm going to observe the cross through the solution by looking directly above. Now after a few seconds, you start to see the precipitate forming and the solution turning this cloudy yellow colour. But I'm going to watch from above until the cross has totally disappeared. Now, and stop the timer. And so I've got a time for my first concentration of 27.44 seconds. So that was the most concentrated. And so now I can vary the concentration by mixing different proportions of the sodium thiosulfate with distilled water, but still keeping the total volume as 50 centimetres cubed. So I'm going to measure out 40 centimetres cubed this time, carefully and slowing down as I get near the 40 mark, a little bit more, and I'm there. I'm going to pour that into my flask. But to dilute it, I'm going to add 10 centimetres cubed of the water. So keeping the volume constant at 50, but now reducing the number of sodium thiosulfate particles in that total volume. So we need to think, how is this going to affect the rate of reaction? Well, a reaction occurs when particles collide. And that collision has got to have sufficient energy for the collision to be successful. By diluting the sodium thiosulfate, I've got the same volume but fewer particles. So a collision is less likely. And so within a minute or a second, we're going to have fewer collisions and therefore a lower frequency. And in theory, a smaller or lower rate of reaction. So to start it off, I'm going to add my 10 centimetres cubed of hydrochloric acid. Being careful again to get the measurement accurate. Reset my clock and start again. Pour the acid in, start the clock, give it a little swirl. And I'm keeping everything else constant. I've got the same volume of solution. I've got the same cross. It's the same person observing it. 
I'm going to watch directly from above until I can no longer see that cross. So as you're looking down into the flask, take care not to breathe in the sulphur dioxide fumes that do come off because it can make you cough. So the precipitate is appearing at a slower rate. The time is longer this time. And as I watch from above, the cross has disappeared. This time at 32 seconds. So the reaction time is longer, so the rate is smaller. So I would repeat this now for three more concentrations of sodium thiosulfate. So I've got five values in total of my independent variable, my concentration, and five values for my dependent variable, which is the reaction time. I can repeat the whole experiment to make sure I can get a reliable result by taking a mean average of those repeats, and then I will plot a graph of concentration of sodium thiosulfate um, against the reaction time. And so now I've collected the data for all of my different concentrations. So I've got my average time for each of the concentrations that I did. And as you can see, it's forming a curved shape. So our line of best fit won't be a straight line. It will be a curve. So I'm just going to turn the paper around here and with my pen, and you should use pencil, obviously, with my pen, I'm just going to do, draw a smooth curve through my points. So I've drawn the line of best fit, and as we can see, it's a curve, not a straight line. And it also shows that as we increase the concentration of the sodium sour sulfate, the reaction time decreases. We could plot one divided by time, which would give us a measurement of rate, because obviously as time increases, rate decreases, but we don't actually need to do that for this particular practical.